welcome to Blue Horse Mukwa in Chase City, Virginia, a rescue and retirement center for horses. Looking into a horse's eyes is a special experience. It's like looking into a mirror of the world. To Rabia Seminole, these mirrors reflect a world she needs to help improve. We have 40 horses um, and about 26 dogs, and they all require a lot of attention. Each one has its own unique story, and they've all come from varying situations. Robia wakes up at 4 a.m. to do pretty much everything for these animals. Feeding them, cleaning up after them, putting out their hay. This has been her routine for 17 years. And in that time, she's only taken two days off. And that was to go to a horse conference. You know, what do you do? You, you, you know, you just can't abandon them. Oh, excuse me, I'm going to the beach. <laughs> it's not gonna happen. For all the work she and her handful of staff members put in, what did they get out of it? They show their, their thanks in many ways. The animal recognizes the person. It, it begins to build a bond between the two of them. This place isn't just a healing place for animals. It's a healing place for people, too. You know, the horses, the dogs, they can help people who have issues going on in their lives. It, it's just a healing sanctuary for everybody. The best part of Blue Horse is the uh, healing process that the animals help me with. I don't think I know any human that can do that. Who needs a therapist when you have friends like these? But the trauma many of these animals have lived through falls on deaf ears, and they're the lucky ones. According to the United States Department of Agriculture, more than 100,000 horses were shipped from the U.S. to Mexico for slaughter in 2015. Tens of thousands more are hauled out to Canada to suffer the same fate. To me, life is really valuable and really important, and I'm going to do anything I can to save that. So we've got irresponsible breeders, we've got people that want a pony, so to speak, and then there's the racehorse thing, too. Racehorses in America are bred from a young age, usually before their bodies are fully developed to be able to handle the impacts of what they're put through on the track. The tale of a young racehorse winning hundreds of thousands of dollars and then landing on a slaughter pen is all too common but the public is only exposed to the highlights. Harry Trotter, hey Harry. Harry was um, on the racetrack. He was a very successful racehorse. He made $500,000 on the track. His last race, he won $20,000, and six months later, he was in the slaughter pen. He was scared to death when he came here. He would stand in the stall and shake. I mean, literally stand in the back of the stall and shake. This horse spoke to me, you know, spoke volumes. And What did he say? He said, help me. He did. Harry's one of eight horses at Rabia's sanctuary that left the track to be left for dead. And as bad as his ordeal was, this horse, imagine, literally almost died on his feet. He at one time was a racehorse, and he was bought at auction by a local person who had them in his backyard, and the guy totally neglected him. Didn't do his feet, didn't feed him, didn't have water. The horse had no shelter at all. He had ticks hanging on him. He was beyond, beyond emaciated. Back when she first found him, Imagine only weighed 700 pounds. After two years of healing at Blue Horse, Imagine weighs in at over 1,000 pounds. From where he started to how far he's come, the name Rabia gave him fits like a good horseshoe. And there's a story behind that. Too. I worked at Record Plant Recording Studio in New York City, and John and Yoko were recording Double Fantasy at the studio. The last night of the recording, John handed me a piece of paper with his name on it and Yoko's name and a caricature he had done. And kiddingly, I said, you spelled my name wrong. And he said, it's the way it sounded to me, love. It was on that fateful night that John Lennon passed away. The first thing John had done that day was sign the album for Mark David Chapman, and the last thing he had done was given the thing to me. And that was kind of, wow, you know, it was kind of intense. And I kept it forever. I kept it for like 23 years and then let it go. When she decided to sell that autograph, she did it so she could afford to found Blue Horse Mukwa. Because I thought it would be something that, it would get, be a gift that would continue to give, you know, so. And it has. Yeah. These guys are alive. <laughs> you may say she's a dreamer, but she's not the only one. She hopes someday 
you'll join her. And our world just might live as one.